So, back again. So this was a video yesterday, and I think there was a video the day before, wasn't there? Uh, I've been making some pretty big threats about doing something cool here. This part of the car, right here. So we did the triple plate clutch thing before Taupo. No, wrong. We did the new single plate clutch before Taupo. It didn't work out, didn't hold the power. So we did a triple plate clutch before the final round at Hampton Downs Super Lap. That held the power just fine. The uh, swappy, changey, ratio, altering box of coggy things in between the clutch and our fancy transfer box, which is there. Uh, that bit became a bit of a weak link and the system started making quite a lot of noise and saying, Glenn, I'm not happy with what you're doing to me here. I'm not happy at all, buddy. I'll get this day done, but don't be thinking there's another one. Uh, she was jumping out of fourth gear, Probably a bell housing misalignment issue there, to be honest. Getting away with it with the single plate clutch, the triple plate clutch without the sprung center in it became more of a problem. Uh, so I was literally, unfortunately, you know, I forgot the GoPro. I was literally drifting the car sideways around the big sweeper, uh, holding it in fourth gear with one hand with the other hand on the wheel. Uh, fun times, not particularly safe. But we, <laughs> we got away with it. Um... So anyway, I'll stop babbling, because you guys want to see what's happening with the... There's too many hints, and most of you know if you follow me on Facebook, or you follow the lab on Facebook, or you follow HGT Precision Sequential Gearboxes on Facebook, then you know what's happening. Look at that. Just look at that. Isn't it pretty? 7075 T6 bullet case cnc machined and polished beautiful diamond cut gears so most a lot of sequential gearboxes are straight cut gears right and they're just hobbed and they have quite rough surface on them and they make quite a lot of noise these are diamond ground gears much much quieter much much more efficient this is being honest, this is a pre-loved unit. This is not a brand spanking new unit. That suits me absolutely fine. The reliability on these things is through the roof. So we should be good. It's um, after sales support and everything on them is awesome. So we could had a fresh rebuild. We only do not a lot of events with the March. But if you work out 20 laps... Um, per, session, per day roughly something like that 20 shifts per lap 400 shifts every time every day at the track yeah so better to do it with a sequential than an H pattern eh? now we've also got a concentric slave cylinder HGT unit it says on there HGT nice billet unit designed specifically for this gearbox we've got as I said we've got a brand new shifter cable um, we've got a shim. I can buy more if I need some. This is a starting point. I can make these anyway, so that's all good. We're away laughing. That might work. That might not. I'll make some more if it doesn't. That's all good. Now, somebody for some reason, unknown to me, oh, I don't know why they did it, but there'll be some logical reason. They've taken the little spigot off the snout here. Now, that's fine. It's not a brand new gearbox. It's pre-loved. We know that. So out with the old calipers. I could just buy this part here, right? It's probably in stock in New Zealand. I could just buy it. But I'm supposed to be an engineer. And I'm supposed to know what I'm doing. What do we got here? 38 millimeters And a little bit. Over here by my lathe. We've got a piece of roll cage tube. 38 millimeters, give or take, right? A tiny little bit. A little bit of clearance is good. You don't want to press it on there. It'll be a nuisance. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that back to how the factory made it. I'm going to put this in the lathe. This just slips out of here. It's got an O-ring and everything holding it all in there. And that's where our seal is for our shaft. That's where our front bearing is. I'm going to slip this in the lathe and machine that out. I'm going to put that new piece of tube in there. That's going to be that where it's been machined off, it's going to be machined out to fit that. I'll press fit that into there, and then I'll put it back in the lathe, and I'll use a DTI, and I'll make sure it's all true, and we'll have 
that good as gold ready to go we do still need to rectify and there's a component that goes from the is it Muncie? is that the pattern they how they pronounce it um this pattern here it's like a gm pattern or something it's like hot rods and v8s and all that sort of stuff it's quite common for sequential gearboxes to have that mounting pattern we've got to go from there to there so HGT Precision supply a bell housing for VQ35HR and VQ37HR, not VQ35DE. So I've had a, we've got one to have a look to see how close they are rather than relying on the internet. And the answer is no. Now that doesn't really work. But that's never stopped us before because a VQ35DE doesn't really work in a Nissan March. So watch this space. We'll sort that out. Ta -da. It's just beautiful, isn't it? It's so shiny. And this is this is a pre-loved one. And look at it. Imagine brand new. This, by the way, this is the GM spline. So we put our brand new triple plate clutch in the march before their last round and that was nissan spline so that is why you might have seen some friction plates up for sale we swapped it out to the bigger stronger more better gm spline and i've made a custom spigot bush to go into the crank shaft which was pretty easy all right here's our replacement snout fits in here I'm trying to do this one-handed actually is a really good snug fit a little bit tight right at the start just there but that's fine pressing it on well not even pressing it sliding it on by hand perfect so that's all set ready to go under there anyway we'll bang that in the press squish um like i say back onto the lathe dti make sure it's dti there stop focusing there that'll do make sure it's all true and then we put it back on the snout of the gearbox there, the front of the gearbox. And that little situation's 100% sorted out. Not a complaint, not a fault, not moaning, whatever. Someone changed something to do whatever it was they wanted to do. I'm changing it back to do what I want to do. I'm not going to call that perfect. I'm going to call that acceptable. Based on this lathe not being the most beautiful piece of engineering in the world. Um, there will be some errors present in that anyway. I have undone these, clocked it around, tried it again. Pretty small margin of error there. Probably less than the clearance in between this tube and the inside of the concentric bearing. So I'm going to call that good, fixed, happy. Of course the real test is, does that fit on there nicely? Beautiful. Sounds good. Looks good. Tiny little bit of clearance there. Yeah, can't see it on that side. By the time that bolt's done up, we will be good as gold. The biggest thing is making sure it was centralized this way. Otherwise, you get wicked wear on your thrust uh, throw out bearing release bearing whatever we want to call it so problem solved just put it together once you've got your bell housing you can put your gearbox up there and you can sort out how many of those shims you need in between here and here to set up your thrust bearing correctly uh, hoping fingers crossed big time that we're not too long as we are here I can measure that up probably based on what we've got for our bearing that we talked about earlier on where the end of the friction plates are and where the fingers are sitting right now and make sure we're not going to end in, in tears and have to do some funky fiddling which I'm good at as you know nothing bolts right up to the march it's all all custom so that's all right happy this is cool isn't that beautiful The shinier there now, random white buff across that. Looks beautiful again. There was nothing wrong with it, it was just done. 
a little bit of surface grease and a little bit of uh, clutch dust had stuck on it. Made it look a little bit not brand new. It looks brand new now. So I've measured this all up. We're not going to need any shims. In fact, it would be nicer if that was thinner. But it's not, so that's the way it is. This is the standard dimensions for this GM shaft arrangement. And in case anyone's forgotten, this is a this is an Ultima slash Maxima flywheel, JWT one, that's been heavily modified and then turned into, because that's a front-wheel drive gearbox, modified and changed into a rear-wheel drive configuration. So, and even then, you can't see it on here, but this has been modified to shift the starter motor forward to take into account where the ring gear is because it's not where it normally is on a rear wheel drive one. Crank angle sensor. That face was modified on the flywheel to get the sensor tone wheel in the right spot. And of course this triple plate quarter master clutch. Where we're ending up is the fingers that are here are in a different spot to where they would be on a standard Nissan setup. Which is fine. Uh, what it results in is that bush. You can see it in there now. Uh, basically, that bush ends up being positioned back to the gearbox. With the start of the bush being here at the end of it, being there. So I've got to pop that bush back out of my crankshaft and make a custom bush that fits inside where the automatic transmission torque converter sits in the end of the crankshaft to relocate my spigot bush from here to here. When I do that, then we're good. All these dimensions all work out pretty sensible. I've got to do something like I say, custom bell housing of some description, but now they've figured out the height, which is actually within about three millimeters of where the factory one needs to be, so that's okay. I'm gonna change or adapt, or make an adapter that goes onto this, onto this flange, and we'll use our CV joints. This gearbox is a lot shorter than our original Nissan gearbox. Anyway, so there's to the edge of that flange there. Somewhere around here, 52, 53, in that ballpark is going to be the total length to the bell housing face on the motor. Around about this, this line here is the end of our gearbox. It's the, the entirety, everything finish no more gearbox beyond that point now let me zoom back and i'll show you so we're talking we finished here there's our line in the dirty paint rather than sand here's the original transmission mount point there's where the gear lever went through in the car so there was still transmission there there's where the drive shaft was hitting the car when it failed so we are from there to there shorter than what we were before so that gives us off the top of my head that's 300 mils or thereabouts 300 mils longer shaft from here to our transfer box which will reduce those drive shaft angles on our cv joints significantly and it gives us more room for this other one that comes down past here. Normally there was a hanger bearing just here. We might be able to, and this was a cutout to allow for some room for the CV joint to wobble around inside the bearing. We're going to have more room to sort this out and get a, a better shot. That one starts back there on the diff flange there. And actually I can't quite move the camera across far enough. But it comes through about here somewhere, very nearly touches the flywheel as it goes past, the ring gear. And then from that point, it goes up to that top one there. It's about 7 degrees angle on those joints. I'd like to reduce that if I can. We probably will be able to. The other option I've considered, and have not ruled out at this point in time, is this whole transfer box comes off that front diff, comes all the way back to our line, which was here. And we fit the transfer box across here instead. Then we take away an entire drive shaft that goes from this point here to that front transfer box. We won't need that anymore. That'll bolt straight on to the gearbox. And then we have one shaft from here to this top point, And one shaft from here 
to, I lost it there, the diff. Make the car lighter, make the car simpler. We'll shift a little bit of weight towards the back. Gain horsepower, simplify it. Could be a good idea. I think there's enough room. We can actually get that done. We can have that there and the output there. Well, I'll look into that as we get a bit further along. Main priority at the moment is get the gearbox attached to the noisy thing in the back there and get that all sorted out. I was just going to head inside and then I had a brilliant idea. So here's, remember I was talking about this bush on the end of here. The bush needs to be about here somewhere. And here's the end of our crankshaft. We've got a bush that's in there, right? So I was talking about making a bush for here to put that bush into here, but I'm going to see if there's a roller bearing that's got 35 OD, which is what this is, and 15 ID, which is what that is. Then all I need to do is put a bearing into here and we're done. That's problem solved. You don't have to muck around and machine things. It literally just quietly tap something into, into its place. It will be good as gold. Yeah, jump on the old Google and look. It exists. The bearing that I want. Problem solved. Easy peasy. Go see our mates at Waikato Bearings. We're done. Speaking of done, that's plenty of video I think for today. It looks quite good from that angle, doesn't it? That should do that and Elliot stop babbling then. All right, cheers for watching, guys. Uh, we will keep going with this one. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Cheers, bye.